The website is www.n-touchnews.com. No, you're absolutely on time. And we started at three, it's a little after three, we were right in the middle of the salutation, but that's all right. It's, it's just that you can't call in. No one can call in because of the electrical outage. The phones are out. Okay, my brother, I'm very sorry about that. Okay, thank you for your uh, participation. Well, it was an incomplete salutation, so I just want to say we thank Allah for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, through whom we have been given our beloved and blessed Redeemer, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Once again, I greet all of you with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. I have to say on the outstart, Due to an electrical outage that occurred last night and the residual effects of which we are suffering right now, the phones are out. However, you can view and listen to the live streaming at www.n-touchnews.com as well as Facebook Live under the same address. We're going to continue to, to read this article, to deal with the subject matters because they are extremely important. And wow, you cannot call in to uh, discuss with us or join the discussion with comments and questions. You can view the show again at our website. That's www.n-touchnews.com as well as Facebook Live. The show can be viewed and heard. Our apologies for this inconvenience. Of course, we have no control over the forces of nature which are under the auspices of Allah, God, and His Christ. We don't have any control. However, let us take advantage of what, out of God's mercy, we are allowed to use to broadcast to you today. Again, I want to thank our dear brother, Daryl Johnson, the CEO of In Touch News, for this great opportunity to allow us to be here in this station. I want to thank all of you who have been tuning in recently. As you know, those of you who are on, we have changed our time from Sunday 10 o'clock or 10 a.m. to Saturday, 3 p.m. as we are broadcasting now. And I want to thank those of you who have followed us in the change. I want to say very happily, announce very happily, that our viewership and listening sh listenership has increased quadruply. You know, or it has increased, I wouldn't say tenfold, but certainly has increased a great deal because of the change of the time and I want to thank you for changing with us and now to the subject matter if you recall last week and the week before that we were highlighting the unjust detainment of one of our sisters and a member of the nation of Islam the wife of student minister Stanley Muhammad who is the representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in the city of College Park, Georgia. She went to visit her family in Mexico and was detained from coming back to America. And we now, after uh, researching the reasons why she was detained, we're finding inconsistencies with policy we are also finding perhaps that which may be an illegal detainment. And we are giving voice to our uh, dislike, if you will, our anger, in fact, at this Im act imposed on our sister and her family by following up, calling our Congress representatives and 
all who are involved uh, in this particular situation. We're going to revisit that next week. We're not going to let up until our sister is returned safely and happily into the arms of her family. We're going to keep the protests and the calls going. However, today, as injustice seems to be the order of the day in this society, in this modern day America, particularly where black and people of color are concerned, there is yet another injustice that we must highlight during this show. The Final Call newspaper, this is the latest copy of the Final Call newspaper. And of course, you can see the brothers out on the street selling the paper, going door to door. We want to ask all of you to participate in the purchase and support of this paper, the Final Call newspaper. It is not only the official journalistic organ that represents uh, protests against injustice all over the world, but it's not just for the nation of Islam. It is for people who are suffering injustice wherever they may be found all over the globe, as this is an international paper. In this paper, this week's paper, there is an article dealing with an outrageous abuse and event that occurred in Buffalo, New York. I want to read the words and then highlight some of the points that are found in the article. The article was written by our dear brother Michael Z. Muhammad, a contributing writer to the Final Call newspaper. And the title of the article is Outraged Over Alleged Assault Threat to Muslim Women by White Man with a Gun After Minor Traffic Incident. And it reads as follows. It tells a very, very familiar story regarding our relationships with those of a certain mindset here in America. Let's begin. It was a Tuesday and the weather for Buffalo, New York was picture perfect with the sun shining and a comfortable 80 degree temperature. Janine Muhammad, the victim of the Nation of Islam's study group in the city and wife of student minister David Muhammad was in no particular hurry driving to pick up her children from school, but she had inadvertently tapped the back of a pickup truck in front of her, driven by one Mr. Jeffrey Calhoun, 62 years old, and things changed dramatically. What happened to her was a terrifying experience that is all too well known to many black people in America, student minister Muhammad told the final call. First, it should be made clear the minor nature of the accidents which did not require the police to be called. According to the New York Department of Motor Vehicles, you have 10 days to report a minor accident. The parties involved simply exchange information. But what happened was far more than just that as Janine Muhammad found herself grabbed and at one point facing a gun wielded by the white driver of the pickup truck. Speaking at a July 17 press conference, a day after the incident, Janine Muhammad said she felt fortunate to be alive. When I went to reach over to get my insurance out of the glove compartment, she states, that's when he, Mr. Calhoun, the perpetrator, reached into the car, snatched my keys, and said, I think you're going to run. She recalled this. 
Getting out of the car to retrieve her keys, she alleged that Mr. Calhoun grabbed me by my hoodie and threw me to the ground. So we were on the ground wrestling, and he tries to take my purse from me. Now I want to stop right here. To all of you who may be listening, including Mr. Calhoun. This is the mercy of Almighty God Allah. Our normal response when our sisters are attacked is to respond in such way to, be, to make an example of the attacker that they would never be able to attack our sister again nor anyone else. But under the guidance of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, the measured and unemotional response and guidance given to us by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, we are pursuing this attack in a lawful, legal way, dispassionate, although there is much passion, unemotional, although there is much emotion but we are not permitting our emotions or our passions to dictate our actions and they should thank almighty God Allah and Mr. Calhoun should thank almighty God Allah for the measured controlled discipline instruction of the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan because the alternative would be much, much worse. Let me continue. Mr. Calhoun pulled his gun and according to student minister Muhammad, stuck it in his wife's chest and threw her to the ground three times trying to take her purse as he was allegedly biting her on the arm. A woman who was screaming for Mr. Calhoun to let Jani Muhammad go and recording the incident via cell phone sprang into action. We thank Allah for our dear sister, Precious Santiago. Precious Santiago bolted from her front porch across the street and rushed to Mrs. Muhammad's defense. She can be heard on the video which went viral yelling Oh, hell no. Get the blank off of her. Get off of her right now. Why are you beating on her? Let her go. Mr. Calhoun then pulled out his gun, pointing it at the women and others who had gathered. Recalling that day, Miss Santiago said she first thought Miss Muhammad was a suspected shoplifter and that Mr. Calhoun was a security officer trying to stop her. She realized, though, that wasn't the case when she observed Mr. Calhoun bite the woman. Just think of that, biting the sister. Equally surprising as the video rolled was the manner in which Mr. Calhoun approached the police when they arrived. As the witness shouted, he has a gun. Mr. Calhoun was commanded by the police to put his hands up. Instead, he pulled a gun from his holster and placed it on the hood of the squad car. Now, I want you to stop for a moment and think about that and envision that same circumstance, but reverse the racial content that this was a black man accosting a white woman. How do you think that black man would have fared in that circumstance at the hands of the police? Well, we have history that clearly indicates what would happen if the racial content was reversed. Let me continue. Without so much as a pat down, he was placed in the back seat without handcuffs. Imagine if it had been a white woman and a black man, said David Muhammad. 
Mr. Muhammad and other black community leaders want the case handled properly and proper charges filed against Mr. Calhoun. We have a lot of community backing, Mr. Muhammad said. The way the police handled him was a complete disparity with the way they treat us. As he draws his weapon, he is never told to drop it or get on the ground. While in the back seat, he calls my wife the N-word, nigger, and tells her she probably doesn't have insurance. It was a gross overreaction on the part of Mr. Calhoun. The police reported the incident as forcible theft with a deadly weapon. The district attorney's office says the case will go to a grand jury. Mr. Calhoun was charged with one felony, one felony, and two misdemeanors. First degree attempted robbery, second degree menacing, and second degree harassment, according to a spokesperson. Min Minister Muhammad says there should be weapons charges and assault charges, and justifiably so. And we are not going to let them cakewalk this thing and tiptoe around it trying to sugarcoat this. You're not going to try to make some deal. They put his license to carry on TV like that was some justification for his pulling his weapon, which was fully loaded. Now, the very fact that they publicized the fact that he had a legal justification to carry a weapon, that does not give you a legal justification to pull it out menacingly, waving it menacingly in a crowd of people whenever you feel you need to? No. But what they're trying to do is set the stage to deal lightly with this beast, to deal lightly with this predator, to deal lightly with this maniac. Let's continue. The news media is playing the incident up as a hate crime. Mr. Muhammad says, however, we are not going to put all of our eggs in that basket. As a result of the incident, according to David Muhammad, Minister David Muhammad, his wife suffered a, co a concussion, soft tissue damage, and swelling and trauma of the incident. Eric County District Attorney's Office spokesperson Caitlin Monroe told the final call, the case is still pending. Mr. Calhoun's case will be presented before a grand jury, and depending on their findings, he could be indicted on the current charges or different charges. So there still isn't a final decision on the charges at this point. Mr. Calhoun was held on a $75,000 property bond before being released on bail. A felony hearing has been scheduled for September 10th. According to his attorney, Daniel Henry, as reported by NBC affiliate WGRZ-TV, Mr. Calhoun's a very, spe very good person. Well, of course they're going to say that. I wonder what their definition of good is, and is it consistent when it regards different races, different racial content? Let's continue. He's very respected. These allegations that have been brought against him are completely out of character, not according to the video. Samuel Radford of the Pol Buffalo Local Action Committee was vital in organizing the press conference that followed the incident. In an interview with The Final Call, he said his organization got involved to add its voice to the demand for justice. We are maintaining a wait-and-see attitude at this point, said Mr. Radford. 
The DA's office has done the minimum and brought charges. We had a community meeting where we believe additional charges should be brought. We believe it should be a hate crime charge. And we have developed 13 additional charges. We sent a letter to the DA outlining our concerns and requesting a response from him as to why he is not using the additional discharges such as suggested if they are negated, he added. We are not only, we not only had questions for the DA, but also for the Buffalo Police Department. We questioned whether a black male under the same circumstances as Calhoun would have been allowed to peacefully surrender to the police while possessing a gun and suggested that he might well have been shot dead instead, said Mr. Radford. That closes the quote and the end of the article. For those of you who are listening, and for those of you who have been, been paying some semblance of attention to current events, particularly when there is an exchange between white law enforcement and black either perpetrators, alleged perpetrators, or victims. We know the answer to Mr. Ratcliffe's rhetorical question. We know what the response would be if the, the racial content was reversed. Now, there's information that will be forthcoming that we're going to share on this show next week when they come in. And we're going to ask and appeal to all who can participate to right this wrong, to see that proper charges are brought against Mr. Calhoun, and also to underscore and highlight the behavior of the police in such event as to whether it was proper. We don't have to ask, is it consistent behavior on the part of the police? We know, again, if the racial content was reversed, it would be a different story all together. As a member of the Nation of Islam, I'm speaking of myself now, approaching nearly 50 years, we have witnessed the historic injustice imposed and perpetrated against black people and people of color by the predominant, the racial predominant society. And we have also sorrowfully and woefully witnessed the response of law enforcement, the judicial system. Well, you know recently, brothers and sisters and those of you who are listening, and viewing, the Department of Justice decided that the police responsible for the murder of our dear brother Eric Ghana was acquitted. And now they're talking about or considering should he be fired from his job. Fired from his job after taking the life of a human being who was pleading with law enforcement at the time when he was under the attack. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Whenever you're telling someone because of their actions against you that you cannot breathe because of what they're doing and they are unrelenting in what they're doing, the intention of that one is to kill the person. For to cut off the air of a human being in a sustained fashion, even though the human being is obviously helpless. The brother was obviously helpless, and there were five officers. Are you trying to tell me 
that this helpless man, after having his breath squeezed out of his body, are you trying to tell me that it was necessary to continue to choke him in an illegal chokehold? But we cannot expect the brother judge to come to the aid of justice where we're concerned. History here in America from the time that our fathers set the soles of their feet in the Western Hemisphere. History records that murder, unjustifiable homicide, detainment, brutalization has been the lot of black people. This is why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, as it is printed on the back page of the Final Call newspaper, what the Muslims want. Point number four is what we now pursue. And I'll read it for those of you who haven't read it or are unfamiliar with it. Point number four reads, we want our people in America whose parents or grandparents were descendants from slaves to be allowed to establish a separate state or territory of their own, either on this continent or elsewhere. We believe that our former slave masters are obligated to provide such land and that the area must be fertile and minerally rich. We believe that our former slave masters are obligated to maintain and supply our needs in this separate territory for the next 20 to 25 years until we are able to produce and supply our own needs. Now why do we think like this? Why does the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad state this? I'll continue. Since we cannot get along with them, them meaning white people here in America, and throughout Europe in peace and, and equality. After giving them 400 years of our sweat and blood and receiving in return some of the worst treatment human beings have ever experienced, we believe our contributions to this land and the suffering forced upon us by white America justifies our demand for complete separation in a state or territory of our own. Close quote. Now you may say separation is an extreme response. And you're right. It is extreme. And whenever we are questioned as to this list of what the Muslims want, authored by the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Point number four is the first question our interviewers or questioners go to, skipping points number one, two, and three. Now let me tell you why we have arrived at number four. Point number one states, we want freedom. We want a full and complete freedom. Point number two reads, we want justice, equal justice under the law. We want justice applied equally to all, regardless of creed or class or color. Point number three reads, we want, we want equality of opportunity. We want equal membership in society with the best in civilized society. Now, if we could achieve this under the current political, economic, social, and cultural framework of America, then there would be no need for point number four. However, history records and present day behavior of the predominant society makes us to know that we cannot achieve these essentials of life freedom, justice, and equality, God-given rights here in America. Therefore, ex 
as extreme as separation is, separation is the best and only solution to the problems that besets both the people. We suffer here in America and you suffer by our presence. That is to say, through this false, pseudo-integrated situation. And it is false, but we are not truly integrated. But that was never the desire and design of the Founding Fathers. When they stated, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and endowed with certain inalienable rights. They didn't consider the Native American in that. They did not consider the black slave in that. They did not consider people of color in that. They were talking about European whites. European whites. So now today in the hypocritical manifestation of the enforcement and following of these so-called constitutional um, rights and laws, what is being made manifest is the truth of the matter that the founding fathers never had us in mind. The Dred Scott decision that determined from the judiciary of America that black people have no rights, that any white people are duty bound to, uh, to, to recognize. You know, I could cite many examples. And some of you who are listening may say, brother, why do you bring up the past? That was 400 or so years ago. We should move on. Try to forget. Well, why don't you tell that to the Jews who say that they will never forget? Why don't you tell that to other whites that have suffered who say that they will never forget? And more importantly, we should be asking them the question, why do you want us to forget? Are you planning a repeat of the enslavement of black people and the people of color? Or have you already devised and implemented a plan through the prison industrial complex to bring slavery back? I think uh, you have, and I think those of you who are listening should consider before you condemn us or ask us to forget. Let me say this on behalf of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, the Nation of Islam and black people everywhere, we will never forget what you did and continue to do. We will never forget what America and Europe owes black people, Native American people. We will never forget. And let me say something to you for those of you who are listening and telling us to forget. America, you say that we should forget. You claim that you're not responsible for what your forefathers did. Well, maybe you didn't do it directly. But as a result of what your forefathers and foremothers did, you are in a privileged position. This is undeniable. The sins of the father, the consequences of which will be visited on the children. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan stated in his last public uh, uh, message from Mas Mariam stated and warned all who were listening Watch the weather. Watch the weather. Do you think America, American government, European government, 
Do you think that this weather, the calamities, the natural calamities, are purposeless? The continued battering of wind, rain, snow, tornadoes, and earthquakes, particularly here in America, do you think this is by accident? America, you're being judged. You are. For your evils against black people in particular, people of color here in America and all over the world, you are being judged. You are in the throes of Almighty God, Allah's judgment. You think that your weapons of mass destruction makes you unapproachable, immune, invulnerable. Well, perhaps you are from and by other nations and to other nations. But there is no invulnerability on your part against the judgment that Allah, God, is waging against you right now. And let me say this on behalf of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who has already said it. It's not going to decrease. The weather will worsen. It's not going to stop. It will become more regular in its um, event and more severe in its destructive power. America, you've brought this judgment in your borders. You don't have to worry about anybody from another outside nation dropping a bomb on you, America. You are a preserved area, so teaches the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. There won't be any foreign bombs dropped on you. Allah is preserving your chastisement and your destruction for him and his Christ. We want to warn you. Allah God is powerful enough to raise up the insects and move them against you. Did you so easily forget the locusts? attack in Las Vegas, covering cars, covering people, covering buildings, covering streets. Locusts. Ants could bring America to a halt and to her knees. Cockroaches. Snakes. The animals. Allah God can command them to come against you, America, and there will be nothing that you can do. Now, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that there is a way out, and I'm going to echo his warning and his mercy. Do right by your former slaves. Give us what we have earned from our suffering and dying while we have fought and died on every foreign battlefield for a so-called freedom that when we came home, we have yet to enjoy. Prisoners of war were treated better than the segregated battalions of black soldiers coming home. Treat the black man right. Heed the word of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And on that note, we know you disagree with him. You know you don't like the bold exposure of you as the synagogue of Satan coming out of his mouth and out of the mouths of many of us who are his students. We know you don't like it. But there's nothing you can do about it. As the Bible teaches you, the bed is too narrow and the cover is too short. You cannot hide synagogue of Satan. You cannot hide, devil, the agents of Satan. There's no hiding place for you. The scripture teaches us, that day shall not come except there be a falling away first and the man, not the spook or the spirit of sin, 
But the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Six days, the scripture says, shall you labor. But on the seventh day, you must rest. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan says that that scripture refers to the 6,000 years that God has given you to rule over his people, the original family of the planet Earth. Those 6,000 years are up. And out of the mercy and beneficence of God, he's giving you an extended period of time to take advantage of escaping the judgment. But that window is fast closing. Do right by your former slaves. You promised us 40 acres and a mule. Well, we don't, we'll take the 40 acres today, but we don't want any mule. We want modern farm equipment. We want eight to ten states, preferably in the south, with an outlet to the sea that is minerally rich and fertile. Yes, we want what Allah God has promised us. Now, for those of you who are listening that might say, Farrakhan is crazy demanding that. And those who follow him are crazy, who echo his demand. Well, the, the scripture teaches us that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of God and his Christ. Turn over to us what is just, or Allah God will give it to us all. All of us and all of it will be given. So as we are approaching the close of our show, I'm hoping that our dear brother, student minister David, will furnish us with information as to how we in mass can help the case by calling in who where and to whom we ever we have to call into to show our support to lift our voices of protest against this injustice and against this unprovoked attack on our sister but i will repeat mr calhoun and all of you who are listening you are under the mercy of allah and his servant the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, for if you were not, this would be a different story altogether. Point number 11 of what the Muslims believe states, we believe our women should be respected and protected as the women of other nationalities are respected and protected in the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad's illuminating book under the chapter entitled Respect and Protect the Black Woman. It states in an analogous way, any farmer who is growing a crop, would not that farmer go into his field, the crops, and turn the leaves over to examine them to make sure that they are not under the attack of any insect or any crop devouring uh, uh, animal. And if he found signs of something destroying or potentially destroying his crop through which he produces food to feed his family, then he'd do all that he could with insecticides and other means of destroying that enemy that is destroying his crop. Well, what do you think we should do for those who attack the black woman? What do you think we should do in protection of that one through whom we survive, through whom we come into existence? 
Mm -hmm. If we're going to protect our crops, then what do you think we should do where our women are concerned? And let me say something to you, dear sisters, if you're listening and watching. You are the most valuable member of our society. You are the second self of God, and in fact are a God. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us that in the self-creating process of bringing Allah or coming into existence, God saw in himself a second self and brought that second self out of himself through whom he reproduces himself over and over again into the future. You are the second self of God. You should be respected and protected. Black man, stop abusing your women. Stop referring to them in such negative and violent, disrespectful terms. Protect your woman and girls. Respect your woman and girls. Keep your daughters safe in this predatory world. My dear sisters, I'll say lastly to you, Respect yourself, dear sister. Carry yourself in a manner that dignifies you. Lower the hem of your garment. This is a sick and perverse world with a chemically prepared male population with pornography abounding, titillating the sexual senses and desires of everybody. You can't see a commercial without some sexual suggestion. Cannot see a show without some su uh, sexual suggestion. Sister, protect yourself. Lower the hem of your garment. You're more valuable than your physical assets. Your real beauty is your mind and the knowledge that your mind encompasses. That's your real beauty, your character. That's your real beauty. We don't have a problem with you enhancing your beauty with makeup and accentuating your beauty with certain hairstyles. But lower the hem of your garments, dear sister, and stop parading yourself nude or near nude in the eyesight and presence of this chemically prepared, uh, pre uh, propelled, perverse, and ignorant black and white man. Protect yourself. And lastly, come on to your nation, the nation of Islam, where you will be respected and protected. Come to the nation of Islam. For those of you who are listening on Facebook and on the website, find your nearest mosque and study group and go and investigate. Our meetings begin every Sunday at 11 o'clock and we're going to be blessed to hear a national broadcast from our national leadership in Chicago, the national assistant to the most honorable minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam student minister Ismail Muhammad. Why don't you search out your nearest mosque or study group and participate in viewing and be and being edified by the message of our dear brother and national assistant, student minister Ishmael Muhammad. And right here in Tampa, you come on out. We're at 5508 North 50th Street in Suite 24 at 11 o'clock. Come on out and join us as we are edified and inspired by the profound message of the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan as delivered by the Student National Assistant of the Nation of Islam, Student Minister Ishmael 
Muhammad. Once again, our meeting will begin at 11 o'clock. Tomorrow, it will be held at 5508 North 50th Street, Suite number 24. And for those of you who want more information, you can call my number. It's 813-481-3921. I don't mind giving it out. It's already taped or tapped. So I don't mind. 813-481-3921. If you need a ride or more information as to the Nation of Islam, but here again, you go and search out the nearest mosque or study group wherever you are listening, whatever city you are in, and come on out and attend the profound message tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Eastern Seaboard and 10 a.m. Central time and of course if there are any listening uh, to the show on the west coast yours is um, 9 o'clock west coast time I think they're 3 hours behind us so I want to thank you for listening we've got a few minutes for those of you who are viewing the show and the numbers are increasing you know exponentially in fact and I thank you for that if you want to continue to listen, if you want to continue to support, you can show your support by calling in. And next week, the phones will be on at 813-444-9588. That's 813-444-9588. And for those of you who want to offer financial support, you can do so by going to PayPal at the address jkingdom1 at aol.com that's jkingdom the number one at aol.com you can also go again in paypal at jm i'm sorry region seven helper dot jm at gmail.com that's region r-e-g-i-o-n seven the number seven helper dot jm at gmail.com or for those of you who use cash app you can go to jm7 the number seven region once again for cash app users that's jm7 region and we certainly appreciate your support so thank you for listening and may Allah God bless us with the light of understanding as I greet you in peace Assalamu alaikum. Okay. Don't show? Yeah.